Grab your Bibles. Let's get to the heart of the matter. There is work to do on today. Uh, I am running on fumes and faith. Thank you. That was real smooth. But the question is what I'm supposed to do now. (laughs) So, I done praised till my zipper came down. Now you're going to tell me in front of everybody what I'm supposed to do now. Excuse me. It is what it is. I'm just happy to see my wife. <laughs> I was out of town last night. I did a concert and I preached in uh, St. Louis. And so we literally got in. We got up at 3 o'clock to catch a 5 a.m. flight to be here on time so I could do 7.30 service. So literally, I'm running on fumes, faith, and prayers. I need people that can get a prayer through to just talk to God because what God wants to do is amazing today. What he wants to do is extraordinary. It's life changing. It's church changing. It really will change the culture of our church. And I pray that he will use me mightily in this place. I don't take it for granted. It's not luck chance, no happenstance that God sent us today to do what he's assigned me to do. It's a different kind of sermon. It's not what I'm used to. It's not what you're used to. It makes me uncomfortable. But I realize that that's when God grows you the best. He has to allow you to be in some uncomfortable situations so that he can increase and favor you. Amen? I said amen. Amen. So if you don't mind being uncomfortable, I don't either. As long as the outcome is that God gets the glory, that my life is better, that growth happens, and that I see increase in favor. And that's what I'm confident is going to happen, that he's going to use this time that we have with each other to increase and grow the value and the importance uh, of our faith and the the prayers that we extend towards God. But I figure this out. If you don't pray, then I can't preach. I do better when I got people that's praying. And so if you don't mind praying, just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor we in good hands then. We in good hands. We in good hands. Turn with me to Luke the 18th chapter. One verse. First verse. Luke 18 and 1. It's just one verse. But this verse is so power-packed, it's so incredible, so next level that I think it's going to change the dynamic of everything that we do. We don't have pictures today. I don't know if there are. We have pictures of, over there in the, in the announcements. So I'll make sure that we have some pictures for next week so we can show you some of the, the uh, uh, progress that's being made. But those of you who have not seen all the debris, the dust, and all the stuff that's out in the parking lot, it's because growth is happening. They're building out our student ministry area right now. I'm super excited about what they're doing and what God is doing in us this season. And so I can't wait for our young people to enjoy and experience uh, their own space, their own facility that's uniquely designed and structured, set up just for them. Uh, Luke, the 18th chapter, the first verse, when you sounded, found it, say amen. amen. I'll read it to you aloud. It says simply this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. How often? Always. Say it one more time. Always. Men ought to how long? Always. Always pray and not faint. God, it's a preaching moment. I can't do it without you. I need your help. I need you to preach through me. I need your strength. I need, God, your wisdom, your acumen, your capability, and your competency so that I can accomplish what you set up for me to accomplish. I need you to get the glory out of this moment. Do something miraculous. Do something different. Just blow our minds and have your magnificent way in this place. And do something, God, that will change everything in our lives. We thank you that you're able, and we thank you that you will. In Jesus' name. Let every expecting heart shout hallelujah Hallelujah. and amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our phenomenal God. Those of you who are just joining us this month, uh, let me bring you, very briefly bring you up to speed. Uh, I've been dealing with the subject of radical 
um, radical, specifically radical faith. Um, and I was torn today because I had the option to preach one of two sermons. Since I wasn't able to preach on last week, I, I really have last week's sermon in my pocket as well. And so I was really torn when I got here this morning as to which direction to go. And it was between radical praise and radical prayer. Well, I, I kind of concluded based upon my time talking to God and his direction, his wisdom, and, and even the comfort or peace that he placed in my heart. I've kind of concluded that we really don't struggle as a church in the area of praise. As a matter of fact, we probably should hang a sign somewhere in the lobby that says, caution will shout. <laughs> We have no problem being excitable and exuberant to express our love, appreciation, and affinity towards God. Uh, it, it, is, it is no small feat that we are a worshiping and a praising church. And so it was really no mystery to me as to how and or why God would redirect me and steer me more towards uh, teaching on prayer than he did on praise. Um, just to give you, however, the gist or the premise of the message that I would have preached if I taught on radical praise. Radical, of course, is outside of the norm. It's extraordinary. It's something that is not normally done or customary. Radical is pushing the limits. Radical is going beyond your comfort and actually allowing yourself to be discomforted in the, for the sake of impacting or changing somebody's life or some circumstance. So to be radical as a Christian, to be radical as a believer is to step outside of your comfort zone and impact somebody's life affirmatively with the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any radical Christians here today? I just want to check and make sure. Any radical Christians on my global campus? I am I'm excited about the move of God that he's already begun because I see that you have taken on this responsibility in a great way and you're encouraged to go out and to reach beyond yourself recognizing the value of your life is not in what you acquire but it's in what you give it's in your ability to offer them the greatest gift we have to give anybody which is jesus christ that makes us a radical church that makes us radical because we're going against everything that everybody else says everything that is our norm everything that could have been and we're doing what god has instructed us to do even in the face of opposition or even in the face of contention or or, or division and that makes us a radical group of people i just want to test this is a test just just a test all the radical saints in here let me just hear you make noise uh, then I'm in the right church. Y'all fooled me for a minute. I was a little nervous. Is this my church? But this is a church that's really on fire to, to, to win souls for Jesus Christ, to tell people that God is still good, that he loves them in spite of. This is a church that's more consumed with lives that are changed by the power of God than we are about doing church. Radical makes you a ministry and not a church. And there is a difference. There's a distinction that there are some people who uh, will major in church, but they never experience ministry. Ministry means we go outside of ourselves and we reach for other people and pull them into the joy that's unspeakable and full of the glory of God. The peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what it is to do ministry. If I had to do it in a, in a brief synopsis, to be radical as a praiser is simple. Here's, this is what I would have taught if I were teaching this today. To be radical as a praiser is simply this. Praise is an expression of appreciation. It is, it is an, an adulation. It is, it is to literally give God the accolades that he deserves. And it is to do it in an exuberant fashion or to do it in a fashion that is visible and known. To praise God is an outward sign of an inward appreciation. Are you with me? So to be a radical praiser, we know praise. We, we, we major in praise. Our church can praise God with the best of them. But to be a radical praiser means that you stand at the tomb of a dead situation and before he ever even says move the stone before you see the resurrection occur before you see it brought back to life you're already celebrating the fact that God is working it out and I was, I'm sorry has already worked it out you're just waiting on the manifestation of what God is about to do where my radical praisers that can see it before you see it 
that can shout for it even before you have it, that can praise God even though it's not yet done. You already see the house. You see the increase, the favor. You see the healing. You see your children saved. You see your neighborhood reaching, reach for the glory of God. You see your community change. You see it before you see it. Slap somebody until they can see. No, you didn't slap them. I'm watching you. You didn't slap them. If you're scared, you should have sat by somebody else. You got to see it before you see it. The Bible says we walk by and not by and not by sight. We don't look at what it looks like. We look at what God said. And when you learn to see what God says, you'll be able to see yourself in a better situation, better circumstance, better capacity than you see right now. And the radical praisers are the people that don't have to have it in the bank, but they're shouting about it in advance. That haven't already completed the degree, but they're praising God because they know it's on the way. That hasn't yet seen the manifestation of it, but they're thanking God because they know it's already done. I got about 20 radical praisers in here, I think. God be the glory. So radical is simply to reach beyond yourself. Radical praise is to praise God in advance of receiving the manifestation of what it is you're believing him for. But this one is very important. It's very powerful. And I really want, I believe God led me and directed me to instruct on this, to teach on this today. Because this is the one that gets the least attention in our worship experience, in our ministry life, or in our church world. And that's radical prayer. It is quite unfortunate that we spend a lot of our time in praise and in worship. But if you notice, it's a very rare occasion when people are really focused and make prayer a priority. And here's, here's something that I want to I offer. This is the thesis of my, of my sermon right here. That you can have a powerful Christian life if you don't have a powerful prayer life. It is just as much important to have a prayer life as it is to have a praise and worship life. It is just as much important as to have a prayer life as it is for you to get here and to attend worship on a Sunday morning. It is so important that God mentioned it throughout the course of, of the text of the scripture. That, that he over and over again made sure that we knew that it was a priority to him. As a matter of fact, here's some numerical values. 508 times you will read the scriptures and it says the word pray. 128 times you can read the word of God and you'll see the word prayer. 65 times you'll read the scriptures and it will, it will show you the value and the importance of the word prayed. So, 508 times it says pray. 128 times it says prayer. And 65 times it says prayed. The only reason it appears so often in the scriptural text is because of the measure of value and importance that God has placed on the need for prayer. And unfortunately, many of us have gotten accustomed to allowing prayer to be something small, minute, minuscule, or something that's not really of value or merit. It's not at the top of our list of priorities when we think about our Christian life or Christian lifestyle. But, and, and here's what I've also noted. The busier we get, the less we pray. But the busier you get, the more you need to pray. You've heard this colloquialism, new levels, new devils. New levels equate to new devils. So, in other words, let me give it to you a different way. The higher you ascend, the, the more he increases you. The, the higher he elevates your life, the more attacks you're going to be subject to. So, guess what? The more prayer you need to have in your life. There's several things about prayer that I want you to understand because, again, this is going to be different. But I'm excited about what God's going to do. But before I can do that, I want to make sure that we completely or we have at least a general understanding. It won't be an in-depth training and teaching because I've taught on this several times before. There are, there are several things about prayer that I think people, it escapes them. And I hope that God drops them in my spirit so I can drop some of those nuggets into your life today. But here's some foundational things about prayer. First thing is that prayer has a purpose. It is not for nothing. Prayer has a purpose. 
And it is so, it, it is so a priority in the mind of God that in Samuel he says, I won't commit the sin of prayerlessness. So not having a prayer life is actually sinning against God. I want to let that sit in for a few minutes. Because a lot of times we feel like prayer, again, is something that's careless and can be thrown to the wind. But if you don't have a prayer life as a believer, you are literally walking outside of the will of God. That's how serious God is. That he would even give us a commandment. Men ought to. Oh, how often? He, he even says it in a different way. Pray without ceasing. You've got to be mindful that it is a priority to God. And anything that is a priority to the mind of God, he gives us in the word of God. And anything that's a priority to him should be a priority to us. That's if we're going to live a true Christian lifestyle. And here's, here's the thing I figured out. There's a lot of people who want to claim Christianity as their own. But they don't want to claim the Christ. They want to say, I'm a believer well, I believe in God, but they don't want to honor who God really is. And you honor who God really is by doing what God has instructed you to do. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so when he commands us or instructs us that we should pray, it should be such a priority to us that our Christian walk is not complete until we learn how to have a prayer life. Are y'all with me? I know some of you that is that... Is that fatigue or is that conviction? If you can't say amen, just say ouch. <laughs> Prayer has a purpose. First thing you need to understand about that purpose is that it's not man's idea, it's God's idea. Man didn't invent this concept and come up with it and say, you know what? I need to just stop every now and then and have a conversation with God. No, God said, talk to me. You're talking to everybody else, but talk to me. You're having conversations about me, but you're really not talking to me. You know of me, but I can't even get a relationship with you. You want to know how to fall in love with somebody? Do it the same way. You want to fall in love with God? Do it the same way you fall, fell in love with somebody else. You remember? You talked all the time. I mean... What you doing? <laughs> Nothing. And it's the same thing today. I don't care. You know, you, you know we used to have to, we, when, we, when we wanted to talk to somebody, we had to dial like this. <laughs> and then tell nosy sister so-and-so on the party line to hang up. I really took some of y'all way back right then. That's my Arkansas roots coming out. It's the same thing now. You just, you just, you just text, tweet, Snapchat, whatever your thing is, W-Y-D. Some of the senior saints says, what? Did he just curse? No, that's W-T-H. I'm just trying to school y'all. I'm trying to help you out. What you doing? Nothing. What you got to do today? Nothing. What you got on? Nothing. <laughs> Wait about 15 more minutes, you're going to get the same round of question. What you doing? Same thing I was doing a minute ago. Nothing. You didn't care. You just wanted to hear each other breathe. Let's just go to sleep. You FaceTime me, I FaceTime. Let's just sleep right here. All day, every day. You couldn't shake them. You couldn't get rid of them. And you didn't even care. Because you were so enthralled, so infatuated, so enamored with the individual. Well, imagine. <laughs> imagine if you had the same passion for talking to God. And know that he's a God that will send answers right back to you. And you're not talking to somebody that can't do anything for you. But you're talking to somebody who can do anything for you. That's the person you need to be spending your time talking to. And it's not an idea that man has created. It is God's instruction to his people. 
He says, you, you, you claim me, you talk about me, you know of me, but I don't ever talk to you. So essentially, I think you're pimping me for my juice. Can, can I hear from you every now and then? God wants to hear from us. Imagine your children have gone off to school or they're gone off in their own individual lives in their own direction and they never call you. Or when they call you, the only time they call and he drops the mic and walks out the road is when they want something. That's how we treat God. He wants to hear from us. He wants, I, I, I say this jokingly, but I'm going to just tell you about it so that you'll understand the dynamic here. But I say this all the time jokingly. My, my, my staff will they'll be around me. We'll all go out to eat or something, and, and they'll start praying or they'll pray over their food. And before they can actually put their fork in their food, I just put my hand over the plate. I say, Lord, I know you don't know that voice. <laughs> but bless this food anyway in Jesus' name. I feel like I need to put my hand over a whole lot of people's plate today. I know you don't know that voice. But Lord, bless them anyway. God wants to hear from you. Tell, tell, uh, tell your neighbor, your daddy is looking for you. Call him. Do y'all remember prayer meeting? See, it used to be a real serious part of the Christian faith and the Christian lifestyle. Prayer was such a priority that they would even set aside a day of the week where they would have what they call prayer meeting. And, and I'm saying it very proper because I'm in the suburbs of Chicago. But if I were down south in Arkansas, they'd call it prayer meeting. M-E-E-T apostrophe N. Meeting. And that's exactly what they would do. And they would have prayer for an hour or so where they were literally petitioning God on behalf of one another and on behalf of themselves. It was a priority of their lifestyle. Somewhere along the line, we've lost our way. Let me even take it a step further. Not only did they spend time in prayer, but even their songs talked about prayer. Y'all remember this? Somebody prayed for me, had me on them. Come on, that's old school. Say it if you know it. Pray for me. Oh, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad. Then they had about 30 different verses. The preacher prayed. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Y'all about to turn that corner. Somebody. I saw you raising up. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. And then, of course, when they really wanted to just tear the church up, somebody say, Oh, pray. For me, oh, pray, pray for me, oh, 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 oh my brother, somebody please pray for me. Too old for some of y'all. Hey, at the altar, I'm asking you, please, please don't forget. Mm -hmm. huh. Don't forget to pray. Thank you, Jesus. That's enough. That's too much. That's too much. Stop. 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 Come on, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Stop. Sit down, sit down. Yeah. Slap somebody and say, now that's when we had prayer meeting. <laughs> so... You can see the passion. 
And you see the difference between the old church and the new church. You sing a song like that about prayer. Somebody realize I need prayer. I need my brother to pray for me, my sister. I need you praying for my children. I need you praying for my health, my finances, my marriage, my money. I need you praying for me. And they realize I need you praying because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. In other words, prayer works. We have to get back to the day where prayer is so important to us. That we're so passionate about it. We don't even have to sing a song about it. You say, let's pray. Come on. What you waiting on? Yes, we've got to pray. Yes, we have to. We have to yield ourselves to communicate with God. Because we need God to communicate with us. Are y'all with me? Prayer is a partnership with God to accomplish his plans on the earth. Prayer is a partnership so that his will in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your, for his people in this world can be fulfilled. Prayer is the opportunity for us to first and foremost communicate with God, to repent to God, to request of the things that we need of God. But more importantly, so that we can even hear the answers from God. Prayer humbles us. Because let's be real, it really doesn't even make sense to pray if we look in our practical understanding. The Bible says that he knows what we ask before we ask it. So in our logical understanding, we can rationalize out what well, I'm going to ask then. If you already know. It's, it's a practical step of humility that says, God, let me acknowledge. You already know what I need, but let me make sure you understand. I know I can't get what I need if I don't have you working on my behalf. Are you with me? It's also an act of obedience. See, God says, the things that I instruct you to do may not make sense to you, but that's why I told you to lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, I just need you to acknowledge me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say, no, no, step this way. No, no, don't go over there. No, no, that door needs to be shut. Come around here. No, no, just be still and stand there because I'm working some stuff out for, so that when you get there, it's already in place. Sometimes he just needs to get your attention in obedience so that he can do what he needs to do for your life. They can't get your attention because you won't talk to him. He said, I just need you to talk to me. I know you're so busy. You got time to do everything. You made time for the grocery clerk. You made time in, in, the, in the nail shop this week. You made time to get your hair done. You made time in the barber shop. You made time for your friends to listen to all their problems. You made time for the doctor, for the doctor's visit this week. You made time to sit down and deal with the bill collectors. You made time to go deal with a job. Work eight hours, you made time to get up and you made time to get off and go and, and go watch your favorite TV show, Ratchet TV. <laughs> you don't miss an episode. Period. You made time for everything, and he's saying, but you don't make time for me. Which says that I'm not a priority. That communicating with me and my instructions, my, my, my commandment that I've given to you means nothing to you. Housewives mean more than I do. My God. Married to medicine means more than I do. I'm going to call your show in a few minutes. I'm coming down, tiptoeing down your road right now. Come on here, Nene. Talk to me here. <laughs> Candy, I see y'all. Come on. Scandal. Y'all all going to hell. You're going straight to hell, right? Father God, in the name of Jesus. Here's the scandal. The scandal is you call yourself a believer, but you don't talk to God. That's the scandal. You want to know what a scandal is? The scandal is you're so busy because you had to get up this morning and turn the sun on. 
Scandal is that you're so busy because you had, to, you had to fashion a curtain of crimson on the sun last night and tell the moon that it's time to shine. The scandal is that you drew a line in the sand and you told the sea, stay right here and don't go any further. The scandal is you're so busy that you had to cause the birds to wake and sing this morning. The scandal is that you gave breath to your own body. The scandal is that you clothed yourself in your right mind. The scandal is that because of you, you got food on your table. The scandal is because of you, you have a roof over your head. That's the scandal. It's scandalous because you didn't have anything to do with any of it. It's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Just whisper it this time because I don't want to tell everybody's business. Just say, your dad is looking for you. Call him. <laughs> Prayer has a purpose. Prayer also has principles. There is a way to pray. There's a way to pray. There, there are rules to prayer. And I don't have time to break all of them down. I've taught on this before. And if I need to, I'll teach on it again. But there are rules to prayer. There are things that govern our whole concept of prayer. And, and a lot of people don't pray. Here's, here's why you don't pray. You don't pray because you don't think you can. You know, when people, people will ask you, it's like, will, will, will somebody lead us in prayer? Everybody's look the other way. I'll be right back. Because you don't feel like you can pray. See, see I, love, I love that I've learned in this part of life that, that really prayer is just a conversation. If you, if you start learning to see God as your daddy, see, Abba Father means daddy God. If you start seeing him as your daddy, you can talk to him like that. When, when I go to my daddy, when I was younger, I would, I would go and say, Daddy, I don't have any money. Daddy, I need help. Daddy, this is, this is too much for me. I don't know how to do this. Daddy, can you show me how to do this? And here's why. I, I figured it out. Some of us, we're, we're, we're tainted and we don't have the capacity to talk to him like he's our daddy because we had a bad relationship with our earthly daddy. But understand that your earthly daddy falters and fails because he's frail and flesh. But your heavenly father faileth not. There is no shadow of turning within him. He's the same yesterday, today. He's the most stable and consistent thing you will ever experience in your whole life. He changeth not, and his compassions fail not. And so you don't have to hold him accountable for what your earthly father failed to do. And you can talk to him. You can have a conversation with him as if you were having a conversation with a friend. He calls you his friend. And I know that our cultural context, can I just talk about the black church experience for a few, for a few minutes? Our cultural context has helped to perpetuate this dynamic because we grew up, let's just think about it, those of you who grew up in church, we grew up where we felt like if you didn't pray a certain way, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm, Lord. And here we are, head bowed and body bent. And we thank you, Lord, that last night our bed didn't become a cooling board. Man, I was 28 years old before I figured out what a cooling board was. <laughs> well, they praying up a storm. To, ah, Lord, move in the building. And we can't wait to see the building that's not made by. <laughs> ah. And so it is that we feel if we can't do all that, we look at that, we say, no, I can't, I, mm -mm. no, I can't do all that. I can't, uh -mm. oh, no. Please understand, I'm not mocking the black church tradition because I experience it, I feel it, I love it, I appreciate it, and I even do it. So I'm not mocking the black church tradition at all, but I want to make sure that you're clear. If your style of prayer is different, it's still good.
So never be intimidated and believe the hype of the enemy that you cannot pray. See, I have an ecumenical experience. I've been to all kinds of churches all over the world, and I love that my parents allowed me to experience everything. Lutheran, Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, Apostolic, Baptist, Missionary Baptist. You know it's a difference. I went, I went to, and then I went to black churches. I even went to Asian churches. I went to white churches. And so I, I, I noticed in the context of all of that that there were different ways and approaches that they had to praying and to talking to God. You know, I, I, my, my white brothers and sisters would be like, Lord, we just love you so much. And we so appreciate your presence today. And for years, I would think, y'all don't know how to pray. <laughs> Until I found this text. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses seven and eight says, and when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not li be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him, <laughs> you can pray. Newsflash, you can pray. You have the gift. You've got the grace. You have the anointing. You have the access. You have the capacity. You have the potential. You have free reign to talk to God as if he is your own personal father. And then God says, I'm going to take it a step further because I want to give you an example, a template, a model, a design. So the disciples said, listen, Lord, we need you to teach us how to pray. He said, all right, I got you. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, he says, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine, are the, by thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 28, 31 seconds. Short, sweet, complete, and to the point. He taught us. He says, here's, a, and understand, we pray this prayer out of ritual, but not relationship. We, we understand it because it has been routine, because it has been trained, rehearsed, and taught, but we really don't know what the value of it is or the parts or components even mean. The first thing is that our father, Abba Father, which is Daddy God, means that you got to have a personal relationship. Prayer is relational. If you're going to pray, you got to have a relationship with God. Otherwise, if he has no relationship with you, your prayers won't be answered. I'm talking about principles here. Prayer, it, it's, it goes on in prayer is reverential. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. First of all, thank you for letting me have a personal relationship, but let me not get too beside myself and let me reverence you and say holy is your name. I don't ever want to be too common that you think I've forgotten who you really are. You know, my, my parents, it's, it's akin to when, my, when I was raised, my parents, um, they were friendly, but they wasn't my friend. We didn't become friends until I was grown. And even now, <laughs> at 30-something, I don't know what y'all laughing for. As a man thinketh in his heart. <laughs> Seth, don't hate. But even now, there's certain things, you know, we can have a, be a <laughs> and then I'll say the wrong thing and something will change in the whole room, the atmosphere, the air will come out. <laughs> and that little boy will step up and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just playing dad. I'm just playing dad. I'm just playing daddy. Dad, I'm just playing. Because you can never be too common with your fathers and your mothers. The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father that your days may be long in the land which Lord the, your God gives you. And so there are certain things that, you know, even now I have to honor him and respect him. And, you know, every now and then, you know, I'll slip up and I'll start speaking in tongues in front of one of them. Y'all will get it tomorrow. <laughs> and they'll look at me sideways and I say, did I, did, who said that? A devil? 
Prayer is responsive. It is a response to God's desire for his will to be done. We say, thy will be done, but we don't really understand what you're saying. Let me give you an example. Let me make it real for you tonight. You're saying, God, this is the best opportunity that I ever have been presented in my whole life. Nothing has been more incredible than the door that you just opened and, 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 and this phenomenal opportunity that sat at my doorstep. And God comes in and say, I didn't give you that. So, no. And you say, okay. No problem. That's not as easy as it sounds. It takes another level of faith and it takes a dynamic relationship for you to trust God's no. Because it can look like the best possible opportunity in the world, but God will say, mm -mm, no. And to say, thy will be done, says God, whatever you say, it's got to be the best thing for me. Just think about it and put it in context of you talking to your children. When you tell them no, it's never an easy, okay, I understand. No, it's like, See, I almost can't say it because when I was growing up, you didn't ask this question. My kids get to ask questions that I didn't get to ask. But why? And you know, in this day, in this dispensation of time, because of, you know, technology and all the other advancements, I have to sit there and I explain to them, well, it's not a good idea because X, Y, Z, and this is going to happen, and that's a possibility, and I just don't want to, I want to protect you from that. But the answer I got was, because I say, oh, y'all got the same mom and daddy? Yeah. Then you got beat too. <laughs> Prayer is a time to make your requests known. Give us this day our daily bread. Give me what I need. Prayer is a repentant time. Forgive us of our debts. It's an opportunity to say, Lord, I'm sorry. And here's what I need you to understand. There's not a person alive that doesn't need repentance. Repentance is a holy act. It is a commanded act and you need to do it. Because you sinned by thought, word, and deed. The moment you thought it, you did it. Are you with me? So you have to make sure that you understand that when he gave a model, he gave a template of the design, he gave more than just something that you just recite. But he gave you an actual roadmap of the things that need to be included in your prayers. The other thing I want you to learn about prayer today is that prayer changes people. God will use prayer to change people's hearts. God will use prayer to change a whole nation. Romans 10 and 1, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer is that for, to God for Israel is that they might be saved. You could literally put anybody's name in there. Brethren, my, my heart's desire and prayer to God is that so-and-so will be saved. Because God will hear your prayers and he will begin his work through the power of the Holy Spirit to change a person's heart. There's some people that the only way you're going to ever reach them is you're going to have to learn how to pray for them. You know, when we would pray for people, we put their names on the altar. That's what these boxes are for. So you could place their names on the altar because there's some things that we cannot deal with in the natural, but it has to be wrestled and tangled in the supernatural. And we place their names on the altar. And the evidence that it works is right here in Romans when Paul says, listen, I'm praying to God for Israel. In other words, it's not just an individual, but God will use it to change a whole nation. That's why he says, if my people... Will call by my name. Turn from their wicked ways. Seek my face. Humble themselves and pray. Then we'll hear from heaven. Forgive our sins and he'll heal the land. Anyone's name could be called there. And I, I love this in Romans 15. Paul says this in 15, 30 through 31. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord's Christ's sake and for the love of the spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. That I may, this is, he says, pray for me, but this is what I want you to pray for. That I may be delivered. And that my service, I'm skipping over, which I have for Jerusalem will be accepted. So he's saying, pray for me that God will deliver me. A person's deliverance is linked to their prayer life. Pray for me that God will deliver me from the hand of the enemy. Deliver me from myself. Deliver me from, the, from these habits. Deliver me from, pray for me that he would deliver me. Your deliverance is linked to prayer. Are you with me? And that he will receive that my service will be acceptable to him. When you pray, he's saying, when you pray for me, it affects what I am or what I'm in and what I do. 
Prayer changes people. Prayer can also help somebody see where they are and where they need to be. You've been trying to talk to them. You've been talking to your blue in the face and you just can't reach them. Stop talking to them so much and talk to God too. Are you with me? As a matter of fact, 2 Kings 6 and 17 says this, and Elijah prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes that he can see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire that was round about Elisha. Elisha said, please open his eyes. You've got to know that prayer changes people. It will cause blinded eyes to be, to be opened. It will cause undeafened ears to be unstopped. It will cause hardened hearts to be softened. But it just takes, it's, it takes time for you to simply place them and make a petition before God on their behalf. And let me help you understand. Paul wasn't just saying pray for them. But notice Paul was saying, somebody, please pray for me. Pray for what I'm in and what I'm supposed to be doing. The other thing about prayer that I want you to know is that prayer addresses problems. What a friend we have in Jesus, oh, our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often leave at the beauty shop. <laughs> and oh, what needless pains we bear. Why? All because we do not carry. How much? Everything to God in prayer. Prayer will work problems out that you don't have the money to fix, that you don't have the relationships to fix, that you don't have the wisdom to know how to fix. Prayer will work some problems out that look impossible to fix. Prayer is the key. It is the catalyst for restoring your peace, for helping you locate your joy. Prayer is the means by which you articulate your concerns before God and then he supernaturally meets you at every turn and every point of your need to blow your mind. Exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think immeasurably. Genesis the 20th chapter and 17 verse. So Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his men made servants and they bare children. He prayed, God worked it out. 1 Samuel, the first chapter, the 10th verse. And she was in bitterness of soul. Hannah prayed unto the Lord because she was barren. He blessed her with a son named Samuel. She prayed. God worked it out. 2 Kings 10, 20 and 2. He says, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord saying, Elijah said, listen God, remember all that I've done for you. And extend the days of my life. He said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. He turned to the wall. He prayed. God worked it out. Jonah was at the bottom of the ocean. Jonah 2 and 1. And then he turned towards God at his lowest possible condition and moment. He prayed. God worked it out. Daniel prayed. Moses prayed. Elijah prayed. Joshua prayed. Joshua was so, he was such a prayer warrior. That when he got into a battle, he was about to run out of daylight, which would have caused the people of God to lose the battle. He turned towards God, had a conversation with God. And I can only imagine that because God answers our prayers and he communicates us in our prayer time, that God says you already have what you need in your mouth. The power of life and death is locked up in your tongue. So turn to the sun and tell it to hold up. So you can finish the work that I sent you to do. Joshua prayed, turned toward the sun and said, sun, stand still. And the sun did not move until the battle was fought. I'm trying to help you understand that prayer will help you fix some problems. When you're in trouble and in the middle of something, prayer can work it out. Prayer will cause you to keep your, perf your perfect peace. The other thing, last thing I need you to know about prayer is that prayer releases power. In Acts, the fourth chapter, the 31st verse, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Paul and John had been arrested. They were taken before the Sanhedrin council. And they were being chastised and ridiculed. As a matter of fact, they were being rebuked because they were casting out demons and teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. They were healing. People were getting healed from the manifestation of the, of the words that were coming out of their mouth and how Jesus was implementing his grace upon their lives. 
And they were, they, were, they were threatened because it was messing with status quo. I don't know how in the world we're going to deal with this. What are we going to do? So they told him, stop teaching in Jesus' name. Uh, Paul says, listen, because uh, he was filled with the Holy Spirit according to the text. Paul says, listen, I, I can't stop doing that. I can't stop telling what I saw. I saw him do it. I saw him make ways out of no way. I saw him turn water into wine. I saw him heal, spit in some mud and put it on somebody's eyes. I saw him do this. I saw him break a little piece of bread and feed 5,000 with the sardines and, 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 a, and, a, and a little boy's lunchable. I saw him do it. I saw him tell the man, take up your bed and walk. I saw him do it with myself. Ain't no way in the world you're going to be able to shut me up because I didn't see too much. You don't let me see what he's capable of. I saw the nail prints in his hand. I saw him when he walked out of the tomb. I saw him when he came from the tomb and walked in and had dinner with us. I saw him do it. So how are you going to tell me not to say something about him if you saw what I saw? As a matter of fact, there was a man there who had just been healed. And he says, well, just look at him. This man is 40 plus years old. You've seen him all his life. And now all of a sudden he's healed in Jesus' name. And you have the audacity to tell me to be quiet? Please. And he said, well, in the Bible, the scripture says that they gave him further warning. Well, I just believe in my heart of hearts because, you know, Paul, was, Paul, Paul wasn't always in the church. Paul, Paul used to be Saul. So I can imagine that when Paul heard them and listened to what they said, that Paul probably, he probably pimped up out of that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to continue to talk about who Jesus is. But watch this. When he got back to the house, he started testifying. This is what happened. They arrested us and they brought us before the Sanhedrin County. He started testifying. But the next thing he did is he realized we're under attack. They're coming against us because of the name of our Lord. So we got some power. We're going to call in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how are you going to do that, Paul? We're going to pray. The Bible says that they started praying in verse 31. And when they prayed, the place was shaken where they assembled together. The power of God came in so strong it shook the foundation of the place. You've seen it before. Where prayer yielded power in Acts 4 and 31, Paul and Silas were locked in, in prison. And at midnight, the Bible says that they sang and they had prayer service under God. And an earthquake hit the place and released every prisoner from their chains. Prayer produces power. Radical prayer is to believe that the scripture is true when it says, whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe that you shall, believe that you have received already, received it, and you shall have what you say. Radical prayer is not confined to decorum. Radical prayer will pray in the grocery store, in the mall. Cab driver brought me home the other day. I was out of town this week. Cab driver brought me home and dropped me off. Of course, you know, he came around the corner. He says, he says, uh, what do you do? I said, um, it's the Lord's door. It's just marvelous in my eyes. And I just left it at that. I got out of the car, walked around, getting ready to go through the garage. He comes out of the car and said, excuse me. Are you a pastor? I said, as a matter of fact, I am. Would you pray for me? Amen. He walks around the front of the car. And listen, it was such a powerful moment. That, that was one of those moments I wish somebody had been there with a tape, a video, a video camera. Because the lights were shining on us and you could only see the silhouette of us joining hands in my driveway. And it was dark all around, so you could see the faint lights of the neighborhood and the community. The, the pole light was on, and, and literally all you could see was the silhouette of this big guy and this little guy standing in the driveway, <laughs> joining hands. I was the big guy. Forget it. <laughs> Whenever y'all get done. Ooh. <laughs> and I prayed, and I felt so phenomenal. And let me tell you, I was so honored that he saw the God in me, number one. But I was also so honored that he would think enough of me to ask me. And let me tell you how he asked me. He said, will you bless me? 
I said, oh, no, I can't do that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pronounce God's blessing over your life. That's going to change everything. And when I tell you I prayed for that man like he was my own daddy. I sat there and called out every demonic principality that ever attacked any part of his life. I pleaded the blood of Jesus. And he was just saying, amen, yes, amen. I said, don't make me do it. Don't push me. I'm too close to the edge. Don't push me. We'll go in this driveway right here. All the neighbors going to know I'm a prayer warrior in a few minutes. Because every time I say in Jesus, he said, yes, in Jesus. Now I say, hey, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, when body bowed and head bent, I come in for you. I would have gone tune up out there in the driveway. Don't make me yank it. So I prayed with him, and I felt phenomenal. I came in and told my wife, I said, I just, I just prayed with the cab driver. <laughs> See, radical prayer doesn't need decorum. Radical prayer doesn't need to wait till the appointed time or till the right time. Radical prayer can be in the bathroom stall at work because you know you need to get something through and call on God like you lost your mind. Radical prayer can be on our nine in Walmart and still give God glory. Radical prayer doesn't need formality. It's radical. It's next level. It's out of the ordinary. It's culture shifting, it's mind blowing, it's, it's decorum busting and breaking limitations. Radical prayer says prayer is so powerful that I'm not going to allow anything to arrest my ability to call power in, to change people's lives, to have my life changed, and or to, to, to cause a nation to be shifted. I refuse to be quiet when I know what I have locked up inside my capacity to communicate with my God. You might be able to shut my mouth, but you can't shut off my mind. I ain't got to move my lips. Watch me. I just prayed for half the section on this side, and y'all don't even realize it. Why? Because I know what my God can do, and I know the power of prayer. Somebody over here, I need, I need a prayer request. I need a prayer request. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on quickly. Come on. Come on, I told y'all it was going to be different today. Come on. Yes, sir, how can we pray? I'm from Wisconsin, and I like to come. This is my home church, and I need a vehicle to get here so I can come to church. That's all I need. Oh, Pastor, I got to tell you this. Back in August. Oh, you're doing too much. Come on. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this brother, for his man, for the man of God and his commitment and his passion to do what you called him to do. I thank you, God, that he is assigned to this house and he's, he thinks it so passionate that he comes to hear the word all the way from Wisconsin. And I ask, God, that you would supernaturally meet him at every turn of his need. God, we know that you will make provision for the vision. And you've already be begun to increase and prosper him in ways that he has not yet realized. But we thank you already that what we have asked you for is already received. It has been done in heavenly places. We're waiting on the earthly manifestation of it. In Jesus' name, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. And we bless you that not only is he going to have a vehicle, but God increase him so that he can be a blessing in the life of somebody else. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And it is so. Come on, somebody else. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Come on. You can, you can just yell it out. I can hear you. Father God, in the name of Jesus right now, we come on behalf of this mother that her son would realize who he is and have a, re a greater relationship with you so he would understand the value of having a greater relationship with his son. We realize that you're the model father. You're the complete example. And we ask God that you would turn his heart towards you. You said the heart of the king is in the hand of the master and you turn it whichever way you choose. Shift his heart back into alignment with his relationship with you that he might know you for himself and have a personal relationship that calls him to conviction and accountability. Thank you God for this praying mother that continues to, to put his name on the altar and we realize that these prayers are not unheard and they're not in vain thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus name amen come on somebody else over here come on father God in the name of Jesus you are a miraculous healer there is nothing that you cannot do 
you are well able. As a matter of fact, through Christ Jesus, you've already performed miracles. You restored sight to the blind. You made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. And we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And so as we lay hands on her, God, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that sight shall be restored, that she will have increase in her mobility. We thank you that, God, you are, you are a God that can work signs, miracles, and wonders. And we know by faith that you're capable of doing it. The doctors may not understand, but let them be bewildered even now as to how the glory of God is going to be manifested and revealed. Thank you, Lord, that the test of our testimony is going to continue to reign supreme and that you oh God are going to continue to do mighty works in her life in Jesus magnificent name we thank you for what you're about to do and we say amen come on somebody over here come on come on come on yes ma'am you're right here you're closest to me yes ma'am God I, I stand in agreement with this couple this married couple that you would bless their union and sanctify it extraordinarily that you would raise them and increase them and elevate them and prosper them in everything that they do everything these hands touch let it be prosperous and as you bless this man of God to be a covering extraordinaire continue to do a mighty and extraordinary work in his life say to the Lord rebuke you right now this man of God is going to lead his family in the glory of God and they're going to see favor fall in their household like never before this woman of God is going to continue to be the nurturer the, the support and, and God all that you called her to be everything that has been locked up inside and dormant that she doesn't even know is there begin to manifest it so that your glory can be revealed in her life and let her life's purpose be increased and elevated so the world can benefit thank you for everything that is produced out of this union that it be sanctioned ordained and blessed in Jesus name we pray amen now, here it is. I, I just wanted to illustrate that for you. Here it is. You have the same power that I have. you got the access to the same God, same authority. You can do the same thing I can do. A lot of times we put too much confidence in man. I'm flesh, I'm frail, I'm one individual. But you're an army of prayer warriors. You're an army of people that can get a prayer through. That's why he says, if you get together, you're going to be dangerous to the devil. One can chase a thousand, but if two of us get together, we can chase 10,000. This is where the enemy messed up today. Some people did not make it in the room. And I'm just going to agree with you that, on, that are watching us on the global campus. I'm going to agree with you. I'll personally agree with you. But for the rest of you who are in the room, let me tell you where the devil messed up. He lets you sit by somebody. <laughs> and where two or three are gathered in his name, he says, there shall I be in the midst of them. So everybody stand. Lay your hands on the shoulders of the people that are on either side of you. Come on, we're about to pray for one another. We're going we're gonna to pray like it's our own family members. We're going to believe God for the supernatural and the extraordinary. Open your mouths and begin to pray right now. Come on, if you know you got power. Come on, I'm praying with you at home right now. I'm praying with you right now. I'm agreeing that God is doing supernatural things in your life. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Pray for the dreams that they have locked up in their hearts. In South Africa, I'm praying for you that God would move mightily in your territory, that your homeland, your home space would be sanctioned, ordained, and blessed by God in the UK. I'm believing God for the supernatural right now, that healing would be manifested. I feel it in the spirit. Thank you, Lord God. The headaches will be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. In the Bahamas right now, God, we thank you that you're moving right now. That you're giving restoration to all the damage and all the things that the enemy thought were going to kill our faith. Thank you for the increase in the Netherlands right now in the name of Jesus. Do a mighty work. Come on. Come on. Pray for their dreams and their hopes. Pray for every sickness and every ailment that has attacked their, father, their bodies. Pray for fathers that they would assume their rightful place in the lives of their children. Come on. Pray for the women of God that God would use them mightily. Pray for the students that they would they would accomplish greater things than they ever thought that they could accomplish. 
pray for their minds that God would restore them to the place of identity that they know who they are in him believe God for them right now come on pray for sons and daughters for grandchildren for grandparents pray for them now in the name of Jesus pray for miracles to be manifested believe God for the extraordinary don't wait don't work don't don't relegate it to the normal he's a supernatural God there's nothing that he cannot do come on we're praying in this place come on we're praying until heaven gets the news we believe in God for the power of God to move like never before in Jesus name 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 in the name that demons tremble in Jesus name in the name that can save heal set free and deliver in Jesus name in the name that cancer is healed diabetes is healed at the name of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost fall in this place until homes can no longer remain the same in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray for complete healing in our bodies that God you would call every cell every tissue every organ every molecule of our body into alignment with your word which says you were wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace is upon you and by your stripes we speak healing in Jesus name in Jesus name financial situations will be turned around God we believe it you're able to do it you're able to provide you're able to do supernatural and extraordinary things you're able to do it God in Jesus name 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 let the redeemed of the Lord loose that shoulder and give God the kind of praise that you are confirmed and convinced that it's already done Come on, believe God for it. It's already done. No, praise him like it's already in the bank. Like the doctor's report is a good report. Praise him like your dreams are being realized. See yourself in it. You got to see it before you see it. Bless his holy name. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. And it is so. <laughs> and it is so. You should have got me before I got to church today. And it is so. If you were going to wipe out my faith, you should have got me before I was reminded of the power I have in my prayer. And it is so. This is a test. Just a test. This is a test of the emergency praise system. This had been the real thing. The trumpet would have sounded. The sky would have rolled back like a scroll. He would have been descending from the clouds with a shout. This is a test of the emergency praise system. I just want to know where my radical prayer warriors are that can praise God radically because you got radical faith. If that's radical, I don't know what normal is. I said a radical praise. So, and it is so, and it is so, and it is so, <laughs> and it is so, I'm happy for you, I'll see you in tomorrow, you look better than you look right now, your finances look better, your relationships look better, your health looks better, I see it before you see it, <laughs> and it is so. Anybody in this place have an old car that you need to get rid of? Okay. You're going to see us down here after service. Where my brother? We're going to make sure that it is in good order. for nothing in all things with prayer and supplication just make your request known unto God yeah. 
see that's what happens when we pray for each other sometimes I don't even know your need because you wear your facade so well but if you'll be humble enough to say I need your help I need you to pray for me this is what I need God to do sometimes the person you go to to pray for you you might have been sent to them because they have the answer to your challenge I need you to say this to yourself same God See, if I were y'all, you know, I'm on this side of the microphone, y'all out there, but if I were you all, I, you, you're on that side of the camera, if I were you all, I would have seen that, and I would have said, well, in that case, let me unroll this scroll, God, and read the list of things that I need you to do in my household, in my marriage, with my children, in my finances, in my body, in my mind, with my joy, with my peace, on my job. Pray without ceasing. Men ought to, ought to, how often? Always pray. I'm going to introduce this. I've been holding on to this for a couple years now, about two years. This concept, this, this is what I'm about to unroll. Pray first. It's about two years we got this, right? Three years. Wow. And God says, now is the time. I've been sitting on this. But I need this to become the mantra of every person's life. Pray first. Sometimes you come to church and you don't get what you need. It's not because you're not, it's not being given. It's because you forgot to. When you get up in the morning, before you brush your teeth, you need to. God don't even care about your morning breath. Before you accept a new position, before you take a, a big step in your life, you better. Before you say I do and before you say will you do, you better. You, you understand what I'm saying? Make that a regular mantra of your life. Pray first. Next time y'all come to me and say, Pastor, I've been dealing with this. I'm going to say, hold up. Did you? Pray first. Pray first. Pray first. Are you with me? Before you go to work, pray first. Before you go to school, pray. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done in this place and for your word that has gone forth. I thank you that you've reminded us of the power of prayer and you've actually, you've made a radical shift in this church. Thank you, God. Thank you that you allow us the privilege of coming to you over and over and over and over again. And you never hold against us the mistakes and the failures and the faults of our yesterdays. You simply say, come to me, bring it to me, and I got you. And thank you for being the God that we can talk to. Thank you for being a friend that sticks closer than our brother. Thank you for being the God that answers our prayers and meets our needs. Thank you for being the God who loves us enough to talk back to us and send direction. We honor you today. We love you today. We praise you today. And we bless your holy name. Thank you for the new territory, the new doors, new opportunity, new favor that prayer is going to unlock. Thank you for unlocking our intercessor. Thank you for giving us the capacity to pray for one another and reminding us of the power of prayer. In the name of Jesus, we declare victory in all things and let every victorious person shout hallelujah, hallelujah. and amen. amen. Come on, put your blessed hands together and praise the name of God. Now you see why I started the sermon the way that I did. I said, it's going to be different, and I'm, I'm on pins and needles. It's new territory. 
But I prayed this before I came in. I said, God, do something new. Shake the foundation of our rituals and our traditions and cause us to get back to the essence of what's important to you. And he did it. So guess what? Your house, your life, your dreams is about to be better because the power of prayer is working for you. <laughs> Glory to God.